Hello and welcome to the Garden of Terror strategy guide. I decided to do this strategy guide now because this map has just re-entered the Storm League uh, rotation, or at least it has in this current season. What is this map? What do we need to worry about it? I'm going to start off with a basic understanding of the map, and then we will go into the strategy from there. To start off, what is this map? Well, the basic idea of Garden of Terror is it is a three-lane, relatively large map uh, with objectives that spawn in one of six locations. It will indicate the location on the mini-map by showing a little icon, as well as the vision portion of the spawning location will also reveal uh, when the objective is saying where it will be spawning. So if we watch this location in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, boom, it reveals the, the vision location of that particular map. Um, so that is the basic area where it's going to be spawning. You need to treat this map similarly to Cursed Hollow, in that when you channel these, you need to get three of them to put a curse on the enemy team. In this case, you are grabbing three seeds. These seeds are protected by four little plant monsters. And these little plant monsters from Stranger Things do quite a lot of damage, but don't have a lot of health. So someone like a Jaina can simply drop down a blizzard, a cone, and they all die. But someone that's left alone trying to deal with it for a while can lose all of their health rather quickly. So you will want to clear up those rather fast or you can do a strategy known as corralling. Corralling is where one tank or one person will pull them all away from their team and then someone else will go and channel on the opposite side. We will see areas where you can kind of see what I mean by all of this when we get to that point. So. On this particular map, you will collect three of these, and when you collect all three of the seeds, the opposing team gets to keep the amount of seeds that they had already, unlike some maps like Alterac Pass, where the time that you gain during the objective is reset every objective. This one is, again, very similar to Cursed Hollow in that if they get two tributes, they keep their tributes, but you still get that curse. And once again, very similarly to Cursed Hollow, the objective turns off structures, or at least that's a gimmick in the objective. So in this case, uh, it will be summoning plant monsters, which will then summon little potted plants that will grow uh, vines to turn off all the nearby structures. And that is the basic gimmick of it. The power of the plant monster is rather strong. In fact, I consider this objective to be one of the strongest objectives in the game. Uh, I have watched over a hundred replays of this map as well as other maps, and I have almost seen, I would say on average, this first objective of the game takes two forts, while most other objectives can only ever take front walls for the first objective, and if you're lucky, you take one fort. So to have that potential to be able to take two forts from the first objective of the game will give you a huge lead if your team can take that objective, and it's very valuable to go from there. So you saw the, the minions that spawned at the start of this objective, and now both teams will fight over this objective to try to gain value. Value. The reason that no one's going for the channel yet is because the channel is interrupted by damage and it takes five full seconds to be able to channel on this particular objective. So we can see right here, Greymane is going for the channel and is able to get the full channel without taking any damage, granting one globe to their team and one point towards the objective. After that, they will go to the next portion of the objective. Now, if you're curious about how this objective spawns and in what order, uh, I'm going to show you this little map right here. And what this map is going to show you is simply a count of each of the objectives. Let's call this objective one, two, three, four, five, six. But that's not the order that they spawn. The order that they spawn is always in an alternating alternation, I guess you could call it. Uh, what I mean by that is while it's going to alternate from... Uh, uh, this area, uh, it's also going to try to alternate from this area as well. So it will either spawn at four first or it will spawn at six first. From four, it will go to three. From six, sorry, excuse me, excuse me. From four, uh, it will go to two. And from six, it will go to two. Then from there, it will begin to alternate back and forth um, on the other axis anyways, which means that from two, if it started at four, it's going to go to six. And if it started at six, it's going to go to four. You kind of see how it's going to go from there. Um, after it goes to four, 
it'll go to three after it goes to six it'll go to one after it goes to one or three it goes down to five and after it goes to five it goes to whatever's left over so let's look at this from one side in this current map it, it spawned at four first which means that it's going to three sorry i'm the worst at this it means it's going to two after two it's going to be going down to six after six it's going to be going to one and after one it's going to go to five and then finally after five it's going to go to three and on the opposite side it's going to go from six to two to four to three to five to one at the end of the day guys just know it always goes bottom top bottom top bottom top bottom top if you don't know exactly where it goes that doesn't matter as much as if it's going to be going top or bottom because that's going to tell you where you need to position any globals if you are running globals um and that is really the basic idea of how this map starts out and now let's continue on the map and i'm going to continue on with some other important factors about this map the first and most important factor i would state is that on almost every team fight based objective uh, map in the game the objective spawns at three minutes uh with the exception of a couple maps that the the teams aren't necessarily going to fight together immediately like braxis holdout and dragonshire spawn quite a bit earlier purely because uh you're not going to be team fighting but all of the maps where you're going to come together as a team spawn at three minutes except for this map which spawns at two minutes and 30 seconds it will give your warning indicator at two minutes which means if you want to get camps before the objective as distractions you need to account for the fact that it spawns 30 seconds earlier than the majority of the maps you're used to you can't really just go from instinct anymore because what your subconscious is used to through conditioning is going to be slightly different on this particular map Speaking of camps before the objective, what is the, the order of camps that you should be going for? Because the first objective always spawns bottom lane, it's very easy to actually predict. On each side, there is a bruiser camp, a siege camp, and a siege camp. There is a opposite symmetrical view, which means that there will be on the opposite side from bottom to top. We have a siege camp, a siege camp, and a bruiser camp. Both teams have the same breakdown of what camps to get in what order, and that is from bottom to top. The faster you can do the bottom camp all the way up to the top camp before the first objective, the more likely you are to win that first objective purely based on the extra experience that you will be given from doing those camps, as well as the distractions that those camps will grant throughout that time, making that the most viable strategy to earn the first objective on this map. Each objective spawns anywhere between 50 and 80 seconds in between each other, which means if you do the camps correctly to win the first objective, you won't have the camps available for the second objective. But guess what? By the third objective, most of your camps will be back up, and it makes it to where the third objective is on the bottom again, which means that if you do your camps correctly the first time, you'll have your camps available for the second, or sorry, for the third objective, which will also be on the bottom, allowing you to do the same strategy once again to win the third objective. So at the very least, if you do the camps correctly on every rotation of this map, uh, you should be able to win every other objective purely off of the camps alone. With the amount of experience your team is gaining, you should be able to have a good chance at winning the alternating objectives as well, um, assuming that you are still getting those camps in high priority. Speaking of priority, what is the priority that we should be drafting for this map? The biggest thing that I would recommend for this particular map is to focus primarily in camp clear. I always recommend having at least two people who can clear camps relatively quickly. Uh, if you have a Rainer, I recommend Executioner. If you have a Grey Main, I mean, I just recommend a Grey Main. Rhaegar's also very good on these maps. The next thing that I would prioritize is AoE. And if you're unfamiliar with AoE, it means Area of Effect. It's primarily a term used to describe mages, spells that hit will hit in a wide area um, while doing damage. AoE heroes are heroes that have a lot of AoE damage. 
On this particular map, the areas where there are fights are very, very small. Uh, it is very clustered in these small little groups, making AoE damage very, very effective and can absolutely dominate teams that are unprepared for it. So number one, prioritize camp clear. Number two, prioritize AoE. Number three, CC is always important and always should be something that your team's looking out for. But on this particular map, CC is very nice purely because you can set up fights when the stalemates happen at these objectives and what i mean by a stalemate is because this objective gets interrupted by damage some teams will simply interrupt for a long period of time without trying to channel to just create a stalemate where they can wait for a particular lead or a particular moment where they do gain that lead which is why CC is very important to break a stalemate before it starts. And then finally, the last priority that you should be looking for on this particular map is poke. And that is to create those stalemates when your team is waiting for a particular power spike. Maybe both teams are level 9, uh, your team is going to hit level 10 first. You are going to stall the objective out until your team hits 10 and then go in for a team fight. Which is why poke is the final priority. So once again, you prioritize camp clear first, then AoE, then CC, and finally poke. Making sure that you have those in the draft. You don't need all of those things in the draft. That's why it's a priority. You go for the things that are more important on the top of that list. And if you happen to have all of those things and you can sneak in one extra thing, that is definitely a valuable tool for this objective. So I've talked about the strategy a little bit on when to, to go from the bottom portion of the map to the top before the all of the objectives on the bottom, meaning every other objective. But what are some other strategies on this map that can really help you take this map to the next level? Well, before you start winning an objective, I always recommend grabbing a siege camp to influence your objective. You can also influence the opposing team's objective by grabbing a camp as well to mitigate the value of that objective. You're going to see the value of AoE very quickly right here in this particular fight. Um, primarily because this Arthas and the Joanna go in, they lock down just about everyone and they can slow everyone throughout all of these types corridors and doing an incredible amount of damage that is just not able to be healed through because of how fast that damage is coming through meaning that this team ended up just completely dominating now before you channel this particular objective is where i would recommend influencing your objective and what i mean by that is this objective turns off enemy structures which means that if you did take a camp your camp will last longer and be more effective over the time that it is there so i usually recommend taking a camp or a secondary camp before channeling if you ever wipe an enemy team this will allow you to take your lead and push it a little bit further in this particular game this team was dominating almost the entire early portion of the game and they come back later and end up losing this game um all of these players are very good but they weren't really pushing their lead and they weren't influencing the objective enough which is kind of an advanced strategy on this map don't just win by drafting well don't just win by getting leads by picking up all of the camps but influence all of your objectives by increasing the potential of them with the camps that are available after uh, you start going for one of these turn-ins uh, the same idea works if you're going to lose an objective you can simply grab a couple camps to mitigate the impact of the enemy objective now let's get into the objective if the opposing team gets the objective uh, the objective will push as far as their minions are then it will summon and the first thing that it does when it reaches enemy structures is summons a potted plant which will turn off structures this also turns off the fountain so if you see this objective coming closer and you're a little low on health or mana make sure to tap the fountain ahead of time now I get asked a lot, well Paradox, should we be destroying the potted plants or should we be going for the actual plant monster? And there are no real hard set rules about this, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a guideline. The potted plant stays at 1800 health no matter what. Uh, no matter how long the, the game goes on, it is at a maximum health of 1800, while the plant monster itself will change in health as the game goes longer, as it increases with scaling just like a lot of other objectives, uh, punishers, immortals, everything like that, it scales. So later in the game, this is much scarier. However, I have watched a lot of games and I found the teams that focus on destroying the potted plant early in the game tend to waste a lot of their DPS when it's likely just going to 
um, drain its health back and, or, or drain its health down, and then the plant monster is going to summon another one. So what I've found is it's better to DPS the plant monster in the early game, uh, and then once you get to the late game, where the potted plant just has a very low amount of health since all of your damage is scaled, but the potted plant's health has not scaled, it's better to go for the potted plant in the late game, destroying it quickly, turning back on your structures, and being able to play a little bit safer. Because of the new tower mechanics, though, I do want to say that this is all at your own discretion. If you find that the enemy team is pushing and you can mitigate their push by getting the turrets to attack at them, it may be better to destroy the potted plant first. Or if you have um, kind of a threshold issue where you can do almost exactly 1800 damage very quickly in a short amount of abilities, then it might be better to quickly destroy this rather than um, going for anything else. So particularly, I would say an Artanis can blow up this in two sets of Ws. Uh, so that might be more valuable for an Artanis to press W twice on this rather than to try to deal with this. So if you're only able to DPS the plant safely, DPS the plant. Um, but this is all at your own discretion. What I would say is you have the choice to safely DPS either or. If it's before 14 minutes, I recommend simply DPSing the plant monster. And if it's post 14 minutes, I recommend destroying the potted plant first. In every other situation, use your discretion. With that being said though, this is what the objective does. It turns off the structures and allows their team to push forward doing a lot of damage. The potted plant does 305 damage at this particular level as well as has 12,000 health. But both of those scale with level and that will continue to increase as the, the time of the map continues to go forward. So keep all of that in mind. Now, I did mention that this objective is one of the most powerful objectives. So once again, on this map, uh, I took two forts with it. It is an extremely powerful objective. So it is a priority to go for the objective on this map. I know there are some maps where it's better to ignore the objective. This is not one of those maps. You should be trying to win the objective every time that you can. Uh, and you should be playing out the map to win the objective because the team that wins the first objective on this map has a 72% chance to win the entire map. Now that doesn't mean it's 100% because in this particular case the team that won the first objective, despite the fact that it looks like they're absolutely dominating, does end up losing this particular game. So that is Garden of Terror, guys. The basic strategy is prioritize camps, go the camps from the bottom all the way up, make sure that you get them before the objective spawns, uh, use AoE damage to win the objectives, you can poke a little bit to stall out objectives, but overall, that is the basic strategy. Advanced strategy on this map comes down to utilizing and influencing the objectives with the camps that are available, and getting a little bit more creative with camp usage and utilizing the objectives. And then finally, the next thing that I would recommend for advanced strategies on this map is abusing the fact that this map has a lot of of bushes and a lot of fog of war so this is one of those maps where you can find a million places to set up ambushes and kill people during their rotations so if you ever find yourself in a situation where you want to get a little sneaky this map has endless possibilities for ambushes the higher rank you get make sure to pay attention to where the enemies are and make sure to drop them or at least drop an ability uh, into the bushes to make sure that you are not getting killed by a particular ambush. And this is also one of those maps where you gain a lot of value in team fights. So having strategies and combos with your particular team is very valuable and something that you can also do as well. Uh, like other maps that are very objective based, while you can win this map by winning the objective, uh, if you do win a team fight, it's still worth it to simply push and set it up because the more value you can get without the objective increases the experience and it'll influence again the objectives that you are going to get meaning that if you destroy all of the front walls up here and you get an objective the objective is likely to get this keep on its own so you can focus on another objective or another lane while pushing with your objective so never limit any map to winning with just the objective you could always push without the objective to gain leads whenever you lead to any sort of team fight victories and that 
is Garden of Terror. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to check out any of my other videos. If you like this style of map guides, uh, feel free to share it with your friends and let me know. I can remake all of my map guides to be a little bit more similar to this, uh, starting off with basic strategies about the map into more advanced strategies that we can definitely go with. If you like it, if you have any ideas for it, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And thank you guys for sticking uh, with this video. It is a little bit longer, but my hope was to make sure to get all of the value off of this. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much, and feel free to check out my other videos.